Hello both PR managers and welcome back for another video. My name is Jack and today we're going to go over the Baho itself for Gamic 13. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to show support for the channel and also click the notification bell to not miss any future uploads. Also check out FPL Social which is a live in-person FPL event coming up in Melbourne in February of next year. We're going to be there so for tickets and information click the link in the description and with that being said let's jump into the video. So in today's video we're going to look over 3 buy, 3 hold and 3 sell options to assist you guys with the transfer planning for the upcoming game week after blank game week 12. First of all, looking at the buy options, Phil Foden is the first buy pick here. If he's not currently in your squad, I would definitely recommend getting him into the side. As at 8.3 million pounds currently, he is my favourite mid-pass midfielder option in the game at the moment, as he's been in such great form for Manchester City. This season, he's already returned 6 goals and 4 assists, and in his last 3 games for Manchester City, he's got himself 4 goals and 1 assist, so he's definitely in some nice recent touch, and looking at these Manchester City fixtures here, he has a great fixture run to one of the highest scoring fielders from now until Gamic 16. Looking at those fixtures now, it's Brighton, Leicester, Fulham and Brentford from now until the end of the, that fixture run before the World Cup ends. It's very, very good fixture run. I really like Leicester away in Gamic 14 especially. Their defence hasn't been so strong, so, uh, too strong so far this season. And otherwise, pretty much every single one of those fixtures there, you'd at least want double or triple up on Manchester City. Phil Foden is especially a good option if you don't have Kevin De Bruyne in the side and you don't have enough money in the team to get him in. I think Foden's a great replacement and he's producing more points than Kevin De Bruyne at the moment actually despite being around four million pounds cheaper so definitely a very uh, very very nice value pick in the middle of the park he's also got great underlying stats with a 3.39 xg which is very high for a midfielder off his price and he's just getting lots of touches in the opposition box he was the focal point of their attack against Liverpool was a bit unlucky to have that disallowed goal in that game but I really like him as a good pick if you don't have him in the squad probably my favorite buy option from Gamex 13 through 16 if you don't already have him. But Kyo Saka, another very nice pick, a little bit cheaper at 7.9 million pounds. He's actually returned in six out of Arsenal's last seven games, so he's been in superb a recent form for an extended run of, of time now, and his underlying stats are very good. He's actually got a higher expected goals figure than Foden of 3.73, and that's because he's also on penalties as well for Arsenal. So for a player of £7.9 million in the midfield to be on penalties for the side, definitely very nice to see. He's returned four goals and five assists on the season, so definitely a very strong attacking output. And looking at the fixtures as well, Southampton, Nottingham Forest, Chelsea and Wolves, Chelsea's the only real difficult one from an attacking perspective. Yes, Wolves way may also be a little bit tricky, but I really like their next two of Southampton and Nottingham Forest. I think Arsenal could score quite a lot of goals in this game, and Saka is just getting so involved with a great balance of goals and assists. And then Ivan Tony, another one that despite blanking in Game Week 12, I still really like for Game Week 13 onwards, especially looking at his next three fixtures of Aston Villa, Wolves, and Nottingham Forest. As we said, he did blank in game week 12. He was facing Chelsea at home in this one, but he actually had a very high expected goals figure of around 0.8, which was very, very high. It actually is one of the highest of all players so far this game week. He did have a couple of decent close-range header chances, saved very well by Kepa, so he definitely could have added to his goal tally of eight goals already this season. His expected goal stat of 7.14 actually ranks in the top three for all players so far this season, so he's definitely getting into some great positions for Brentford. He's on on penalties and he's getting great chances from open play so definitely a decent player for consideration especially looking at Brentford's next three fixtures he has also provided two assists as well so a decent tally for him and if I can see the reason maybe you wouldn't be looking to go for him as a lot of people already do have those three forwards locked in but maybe you don't have enough money to afford Harry Kane and in looking for another decent mid-price forward option I think Tony is the top contender at around seven million pounds at the moment for Brentford. So with that being said, let's have a look at some hold options. These are players that have been heavily transferred out by managers so far this game week, but we recommend holding on to. The first one here is Harry Kane, and surprisingly, already 50,000 managers have transferred him out, which does make him one of the most transferred out players coming into Game Week 13. I don't really see the reason for this outside of him blanking in Game Week 12, which was the first time he blanked in 10 Game Weeks. In fact, he did return in the previous nine for Tottenham, so he's another player that's had a uh, brilliant extended run of form. His underlying stats, of course, are very good with a 7.9 XG, ranking second amongst all players so far this season, only behind Erling Haaland. And with 
with this XG, he's been able to return nine goals, so he's definitely been very prolific in front of goal. He's also chipped in with two assists as well, so definitely a very nice option to have on the side. And in my opinion, probably the second best premium option in the game right now, only behind Erling Haaland. I still think he's better than Salah and De Bruyne. And with the good fixtures coming up of Newcastle, Bournemouth, and Leeds as three out of his next four, Liverpool at home also not the worst. Liverpool have conceded a lot of goals so far this season. They have come off two clean sheets though in their uh, most recent two games, but I'm really looking at those three fixtures around this Liverpool fixture. I think Harry Kane will probably return at, at least two or three out of the next four matches, and that's probably going to be one of the highest points tallies out of any premium option in the game for the next four game weeks. So if he's already in your squad right now, I definitely would not be looking to sell him. He's got two great fixtures coming up with Newcastle and Bournemouth. I wouldn't, yeah, just I think it's a bit too knee-jerk. He's selling him after one poor performance in game week 12 of getting no attacking returns, but otherwise still a very, very strong option to have in the team. The next one here is Madison, which is an interesting talking point. He is available for game week 13, and it was previously showing on the FPL website that he saw the red flag around his name but he is returning for Gamic 13. It was just a one-week suspension in Gamic 12. So since if you still got him in your team, I wouldn't be selling him now. He's got some decent fixtures from now until Gamic 16. Wolves away is not the worst. Manchester City, yes, that's a bit tricky. But in fact, a couple of recent games between Leicester and Manchester City have been quite high scoring, actually. And then after that, Everton away and West Ham away is also a decent couple of fixtures. So considering uh, the other £8 million midfield options right now, I still think Madison ranks as probably the third or fourth best pick at this price, perhaps behind Foden and Saka. So if he's already in your team, definitely not a priority transfer to get rid of him. He's still got decent fixtures, and he has been in good form this season. Five goals and two assists. His underlying stats aren't crazy with a 1.8 XG, but he does score a lot of goals from outside the box consistently, which is good to see. So if he's uh, if he's in your team right now, I definitely wouldn't sell him as he is going to be back for game week 13. And the next one here is Gabriel Jesus, another player that a lot of managers are selling just because he blanked in game week 12. I definitely would be looking to hold on to the Arsenal man as he's got good fixtures coming up. Southampton, Nottingham Forest and Wolves as threat of his next four. Some de uh, very good fixtures for him to continue some nice form for himself so far this season. A 3.3 XG, pretty decent underlying numbers and five goals and four assists. Has the same score involvement as Bakayo Saka this season. Yeah, Bakayo Saka is one of the most bought players and Jesus is one of the most sold players. So personally, if Jesus was in my team, I definitely would not be looking to get rid of him this week, especially with the great next two fixtures of Southampton and Nottingham Forest. Next up, let's have a look at these sell options now. Unsurprisingly, Rhys James remains on the sell list. Of course, if he's in your team right now, definitely a great chance to get rid of him before his price goes down. Surprisingly, his price has remained at six million pounds for quite a while, but I do think in the next coming one or two price changes, I would expect him to drop down to 5.9. He obviously is not going to be available until after the World Cup, which we'll see him miss at the next four game weeks in FPL. And so for that reason, I definitely think it's time to look at a replacement for him. If you haven't already got rid of him from the team, I'd be doing so definitely before the next price changes in case he drops in value. As far as his replacements go, I've touched on this previously, I would definitely be looking at those 4.5 defender options. Saying that though, Trent has got himself eight points in his most recent match and Liverpool have got two clean sheets in the last two. So if you do have money in the bank and you're happy with the, West, with the rest of your squad, maybe you could take a punt on Trent and hope that Liverpool defensive form continues. Otherwise, there are a lot of good 4.5 defender options right now. Uh, Timothy Castagna is one of my favorite picks at 4.5. He's got great attacking potential with good fixtures as we looked at with James Madison there. Otherwise, a Wolves defender in Max Kilman could be nice. Uh, uh, bueno actually was coming in at 3.9 million pounds we'll have to see if he continues to get minutes for wolves he could be an exciting pick there otherwise some crystal palace defender options they've got good fixtures as well so if you're looking at gehi or maybe anderson as well two decent picks at that price as good replacements for reese james moving on at trossard is a player that has been heavily transferred in he actually has increased in price three consecutive game weeks up to 6.9 million pounds currently but I think that value will start to decrease as he is one of the most sold players this game week. Personally, I was never a massive fan of Trossard. He's actually only returned in three games so far this season for Brighton, but he has been very productive in the games that he has returned in. Looking at his fixtures though, Manchester City and Chelsea is the next two. Definitely not the easiest from an attacking perspective. 
And outside of these three games of good performances, he's not provided too much for Brighton. He's got a decent XG, to be fair, of 3.31 with five goals and two assists. But as we've touched on in the buy list, there is a couple of other really decent mid-price midfielder picks. If you have money in the bank, I'd be definitely looking to get either Foden or Saka if you don't have either of those two options, or even Gabriel Martinelli in the Arsenal midfield at a bit of a cheaper price, a similar one, in fact, the Trossard especially with Manchester City as the next fixture. I'm not keen on Trossard in the side. So for me, definitely a good sell pick before his value also starts to decrease. And then to round out the sell option, it's another fairly obvious one. He's remained on the sell list for the last couple of videos now in Luis Diaz. His price has already dropped to 7.9. Another one that I'd be looking to get rid of before his value decreases even, uh, even further. He's not going to be available for the next four game weeks for Liverpool. So of course, another very decent option to sell. And looking at his price of around £8 million, as we've touched on, there are some great options at this price tag. It's an easy replacement to make. So if you haven't got rid of him, definitely look to do so as soon as possible to avoid a further price decreases and capitalize on any price increases in the likes of Foden or even Bakara Saka. Thanks for watching today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed the buy hold itself for Gamic 13. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to show support for the channel. And also click the notification bell so you guys don't miss any future uploads. Also look out for FPL Social, which is a live in-person FPL event coming up in Melbourne in February of next year. For tickets and more information, click the link in the description. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.